The project is to turn this grassy area into a paver patio with a fire pit. We start by staking out the patio and running a string around the border and then move to digging out anything organic that would otherwise decompose underneath the patio. The best method we found was to keep the soil damp, cut it into squares and lift it up in chunks. We have two water issues. One is a couple of sprinkler heads that need to be capped. The second is this drain that connects to a gutter. Where it is, it would possibly erode under the patio, so I needed to move it down and a few feet away. After digging and working on the sprinklers, the ground was a little choppy, so I rented a plate compactor. To set the grade, I used a line level on a string. Looking left to right from the back of the house, the patio will be level. But from the house out toward the yard, I wanted a slope for drainage. I picked 3 16 inch per foot. And when I marked that off, again with the line level, you can see that I was going to need a fair amount of dirt to bring it up. It may be different where you live, but where I live, fill dirt is not easy to come by. I just happened to have a neighbor who was having his yard dug for a pool, and the excavator was nice enough to give me some of that dirt. Grading the dirt to the string lines is one of the trickiest parts of the process. On one side of the patio, I put down some plastic paver edging and lined that up with the string. And on the other side, I embedded rebar into the ground. I couldn't find a screed that was long enough and straight enough to reach from one to the other, so I made one using a long board that was as straight as I could get it and attaching to it two other boards that were as straight as I could get those. And then we run that screed from the rebar down to the plastic edging to set the grade. Dragging the dirt, going back filling in low spots, iterating until it was generally flat. At that point I rented a plate compactor again because a lot of this was very loose fill dirt. I compacted, making low spots, which I filled in with more material, and then compacted again, over and over again, until it was flat. And here you can see the grade over four feet, three sixteenths inch per foot will drop three quarters of an inch, which is about what I have. For these Brock paver pads, the process is to lay down a weed barrier, then spread a half inch bed of sand, lay down the pads and put your pavers on top of that. To get the depth of the sand right, I tried attaching a half inch spacer to the bottom of the screed. That did not end up working because the spacer was riding on top of the sand and it was also grabbing the weed fabric. So we scrapped that and ended up using half inch thick sticks as guides. And make sure that you're using just plain sand, not paver base or gravel. I had actually originally purchased this patio paver sand product from Home Depot by Pavestone and it was much too granular. I ended up going to a stone yard and buying the sand they use for concrete mix by the bucket. Putting down the pads is straightforward. They cut easily with a serrated knife. As you reach the grooves in the sand created by the sticks, you just hand fill those in. I would recommend doing the pads and the pavers in the same day. I couldn't do that and as you can see, the pads started to curl when I left them overnight. 
The benefit of these pads is that they save you from a lot of digging and material handling. You would otherwise need to create a four inch paver base. So I would have had to dig four inches deeper into the soil and bring in a paver base and compact that. Then you would put sand on top of that and put your pavers directly on the sand. The problem I had is that these pavers are 90 pounds each and it was going to be very hard to put them down in the correct position the first time. So if I was doing that directly on sand, I would be messing up the sand every time I tried to reposition them. These Brock panels definitely give you some flexibility to put the paver down and then position it into place. But I will say that the pads are not perfect. There were places where I had to put sand between the paver and the pads in order to level them out. To connect the existing patio to the pavers, I'm pouring four concrete stepping stones. I did a separate video on that, which I will link in the description and just touch on the highlights here. The fire pit I'm using is this octagon, so I wanted to cut the pavers to match that shape. For that, I'm using an angle grinder with a masonry blade. The pavers are two inches thick, so I had to cut on both sides and still it didn't reach all the way through. So here we are with that octagon shape cut out. You may have noticed earlier that I left a gap in the panels and that's because I have this four section patio. It didn't require the panels to be completely joined. I then secured the pavers by staking in plastic paver edging all the way around. The paver pads are sticking out beyond the pavers about four to six inches. So I'm staking on top of the mats through them. I did not use polymeric sand in between the joints as you may have seen in other videos. My joints are very tight, about a 32nd of an inch, and that product is recommended for wider joints. Where the fireplace will sit, I added a layer of sand to protect the panels from any heat or ash. And then as a final step to fill in all these gaps, we added river rock. So here we are at the end. I think it turned out pretty well. I still need to get some furniture and I have a few related projects. Like I wanna fence off the view of the air conditioners and maybe add a small water feature. But it is brutally hot in the Texas summer and those will have to wait for the fall.